Uh, I'm ready for any of your gardening questions. Yes. I don't know if it was because we had minus 38 this winter for a week, but all my spirea plants have just, and they've been in the ground for a number of years and, and then all of a sudden nothing this year. So there's no sign of life whatsoever in them? Um, where are they facing? What direction are they facing? I'm on, uh, they're in the front, which is north side, but they're they're far enough that they they get lots of sun. So the, I think a lot of the problems when you when you have temperatures that are that low is is not the actual temperature; it's the wind. Oh, and, yeah, and and if if those plants are exposed to the wind um, and they dry out, which they will. Um, that's likely what happened. And spirea are actually prone to that, especially if they're in an area where, where you know, there, there's a, a heavy amount of winter wind along with a cold temperature. Oh, okay. So oh. If, if it was me, um, I might not give up on them quite yet. Um, I think I might cut them back okay. and I might even go in there and poke around with my finger and see if you, you can see any sign of any kind of budding out or new growth, even below the surface of the soil. Okay. So um, it would be a shame to have to get rid of them, but yeah. that's something you'll have to do. Okay. I was, I was really sad when I <laughs> saw nothing, nothing was coming out. So, okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Here we have little red beetles eating our lilies. Any advice on how to get rid of these? This is a problem. Um, my email box is full of questions on red lily beetles. And red lily beetles are a relatively new problem in Edmonton. Um, they're, and they're a big problem because they're, they can't be chemically controlled. The key to this is to recognize them early. Um, the larvae are yellow to orange, and they have this lovely habit uh, of covering themselves with slimy fecal material to make themselves look like bird droppings. So you have to really know what you're looking for. Uh, Google red lily beetle larva on the internet so that you could see a photo of it and see what they look like. They, the, the beetles themselves have voracious appetites. The adults are strong flyers. They fly really, really well and for long distances so they can spread quickly. The adults can overwinter um, in the soil underneath the lily. So first thing in the spring, you might try digging around and seeing if you see any sleeping adults and carry a little uh, container with soapy water and dump the adults into the soapy water to kill them. If you don't see any, um, you, that doesn't mean that they're not there. You could try sprinkling some diatomaceous earth, which is a natural product. It actually comes from prehistoric uh, animals found in the sea. And what it does is it dehydrates the insect once it walks through it. So sprinkling diatomaceous earth around the base of your lily uh, would be helpful. And of course, the age old thing is to is once you find either a larva or a, an adult is, is hand picking. Right now, the, the American Lily Society is saying that that is the number one method for um, controlling these things. Now that I do have some anecdotal information about this, some people are finding that sprinkling coffee grounds around the base of the lilies is helping to with their problem. So it might be something worthwhile trying as well. Hi, Jerry, do you have any tips? Oh, any tips for how to prevent my dog from digging up my plants and chewing my raspberry stalks? Dogs? Dogs, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, I have never heard of this one before. Um, Raspberry stalks are pretty sharp for them to be. Is it a puppy? Uh, well, right now she's a puppy. The our last dog chewed the raspberry stalks to the ground, 
And now like that dog is not with us anymore, but the puppy that we just caught two one. So I'm super nervous. I'm thinking, how can I prevent it? Okay. Yeah. It's actually an easy solution. Um, you can you can do two one of two things. You can use cayenne pepper um, put onto the bottom of the raspberry stalks and also around the base of the plants. Uh, if they get their any of those that cayenne pepper gets up their nose, uh, it's not a pleasant experience for a dog and they'll remember. The other alternative that you can use is a product that I like to use myself and it's called No Bite. It's, a, it's a spray, an aerosol spray. The good thing about it is that um, it also is a learning tool for animals. It contains a, pro, a, a chemical called Bitrex, which is the most bitter substance known to mankind. It doesn't cause damage, but it is extremely horrible to taste. They mix that with cedar oil. So you spray that on your plant and the animal comes along and the first time it tastes it, it, it the horrible taste is, sticks with them, but they also being a dogs with sensitive smell, they smell the cedar oil. So the next time they come to that plant, they're gonna smell the cedar oil and remember the experience. So the, the no bite is available and I think in most garden centers. Hi, Jerry, we have five Swedish aspen trees that we planted two years ago. Four of them are growing beautiful, but beautifully, but one does not appear to be growing and it is about four feet shorter than the others. Our next door neighbor has an in-ground sp sprinkler and the water seems to pool close to this smaller tree. Could this be the reason or okay. is there something else that is preventing it from growing? Uh, um, I would be 99% sure that the water is the problem. Um, now, how to deal with it is another situation. I mean, without having your neighbor shut off that particular part of his sprinkler area, um, if it's me, perhaps I'm looking at a way so that I can drain that water away from, from the base of that tree. Digging a small trench and having it go off in a different direction might be something to consider. Um, it's, it's a difficult problem because it's not one that you can personally solve. You have to involve your neighbor. Um, and this one's from Lisa. Hi, Jerry. Any tips on growing foxglove? My backyard has full and part shade and hostas, ferns, bleeding heart, elephant ears all do quite well back there. I purchased several last year and also need, seeded some, and I'm just looking for ways to encourage their, their growth and spread. So actually the, the, uh, the conditions that, that have been described there would be perfect for growing foxgloves. Um, I grow them myself and I grow them almost in, um, almost in total shade. It's, I probably get about two or three hours of sunshine. They're, they're really not a fussy plant at all. They're, they're easy to, to grow. They don't ask for fertilizer. Um, they tolerate drought. They're, they're, they're a really good plant for, for that type of application and they actually would look really good with the other plants that you've already described. So there, there's no special tips that I can give you for growing foxgloves. You've, the, the lighting would have been the number one consideration and uh, they even do good in poor soil. So there you go, it might be the perfect plant. Yeah, I, Jerry, I must be doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just can't uh, figure out what it is that um, they seem to be hesitant to grow. The, the, I'm just not quite sure okay. what it is that I can do. So let's get more specific then. So okay. is this area close to any trees or any other close to any of the shrubs? Uh, the areas, yes, as, all, as are all of the other plants. Uh, I have an American elm back there. Um, I've got a um, lodgepole pine. Okay. Um, there's also a, fi a a burning bush. So, okay. how close to the how, how close to the lodgepole pine are you trying to plant the foxgloves? Uh, the closest foxglove is about, I would say, eight feet from the trunk. But most of them are, are you know, eight to twelve feet from any of the trees. Okay. That might be part of the problem. Um, 
pines and the other two trees that you've described are notorious for being water hogs. Um, are you watering that those foxgloves on a regular basis? Because if you're not, that might be the issue. Um, well, the past couple of days, yes, we've been putting quite a bit of water on them for okay. for the heat. And uh, so you think just just increasing the water uh, would probably help to spark them a little bit? A yes. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Leafy G. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Jerry. This was very entertaining. Oh, it's been my pleasure, truly.